to the Leavenworth Planning Commission meeting for August 2nd, 2021. First thing we will determine on our call to order is that we have a quorum, which I know we do have. We have six planning commissioners here, so thank you for your attendance for that one on the six you were here. Next thing is approval of minutes. Our last meeting was on June 7th, 2021. I have reviewed those minutes. Does any commissioner have any comments, ads, or deletions, or changes recommended for the uh, June 7th meeting? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes as, 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 as sent on June 7th. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, second. 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 Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We have one agenda item tonight, our new business, 2021-21, the reservation or the residence at 410 South 2nd Street. Conduct a public hearing for case number 2021-21, the residence at 410 South 2nd Street. The applicant is requesting a rezoning of the property located at the 410 South 2nd Street from the L1 Light Industrial District to CDB, which is Central Business District. Staff report, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you said, this is a request to rezone the property at 410 South 2nd Street from I-1, which is Light Industrial, to CBD, which is Central Business District. Uh, the property right now houses a c &H Supply, it's a plumbing supply company, and the property consists of uh, the largest portion of the building is kind of a large warehouse type structure with an attached um, smaller brick retail space that fronts on 2nd Street and then um, a large fenced in kind of outdoor storage area um, that's part of that. So um, the, what the applicant is intending to do is use the warehouse portion as a mini storage facility. Um, that would require <coughs> issuance of a special use permit with the Central Business District and then use the um, smaller attached retail portion as a cigar lounge there fronting on 2nd Street. Um, so it is part of the downtown Leavenworth area. Um, just to kind of show you, get the zoning up here. So all of the red is Central Business District. So it's kind of this yellow highlighted uh, portion. You can see it's right there in the downtown area. Um, just to the west of it is another industrial zone property. That's the school district's maintenance facility um, that you're probably familiar with, but most of the rest of it is just kind of that standard retail and mixed use of downtown. And then to the north and east are the stove factory lofts um, that, you're, that you're, I'm sure, familiar with. So um, just to kind of go through the criteria that um, are required for a rezoning request, the first is the character of the neighborhood. So again, it is the current site of the CNH supply and is part of the Leavenworth Industrial Historic District. Again, the site is considered to be in downtown Leavenworth. They're at the southwest corner of 2nd and Choctaw. Uh, the majority of downtown is zoned central business district and has a variety of uses uh, contained in it. The second is the zoning and use of the properties nearby. So um, as we just looked at, the properties to the east and north are zoned Central Business District and occupied by the Stove Factory Lofts. Property to the west is zoned I-1, and as I said, is the site of the Leavenworth uh, School District Maintenance Facility. And then the property to the south across Three Mile Creek is zoned Office Business District, and that's the location of the Justice Center with um, the courts and police and uh, sheriff's office. The next is the suitability of the subject property to the uses for which it has been restricted. Uh, the subject property was built in the late 1800s and has served a, a variety of purposes over the years. Uh, the nature of the warehouse portion of the building does limit um, the types of uses that it can reasonably accommodate to more industrial type uses um, without making significant changes to the building. And then the retail portion of that building that fronts on 2nd Street is pretty much limited to retail type uses, which would not be allowed in the current zoning of light industrial. The next is the extent to which removal of the restrictions will detrimentally affect nearby property. Uh, the proposed rezoning should have little detrimental effect on surrounding properties. CBD is a less intense zoning district than I-1 and is going to allow a less um, intense mix of uses in there 
Um, so that would really tend to not have any sort of detrimental effect on the surrounding area. The next is the length of time the subject property has remained vacant. Uh, the property is not currently vacant. Uh, as I said, it is the location of CNH Plumbing Supply. The next is the relative gain to economic development, public health, safety, and welfare by the reduction of the value of the landowner's property as compared to the hardship imposed by such reduction upon the individual landowner. And this uh, proposed rezoning should have a positive effect on public health, safety, and welfare, again, by bringing it into a more suitable zoning um, for the surrounding area, bringing it into a sort of conformance with the existing downtown area. The next is the recommendation of uh, staff. Staff does recommend approval of this rezoning request. <coughs> the next is the conformance of the requested <coughs> change to the adopted or recognized comprehensive land use plan. Uh, the recently adopted comprehensive land use plan identifies this as appropriate for mixed use, and so this would be in conformance with that, um, given the proposed mix of uses of the mini storage facility and the cigar lounge um, in the separate portion of it. And then the final is any other factors that may be relevant to a particular um, amendment, and there are really no other factors to note. The only thing I would say is this, since this is in a historic district, it's in the Leavenworth Industrial Historic District, this does require review by the Leavenworth Preservation Commission, and that's scheduled for this Wednesday. So um, the applicant is here to answer any questions, and I can answer any questions that you might have of staff. Thank you. Uh, well, have we received any concerns from any vendors or anyone in the immediate area of concern of, of this? We have not received any concerns or communication from anybody after notifications were sent out. Okay. Does any commissioner <coughs> have any questions or anything you'd like to ask Julie before we open it up to the applicant? Any commissioner? Any concern on that? Okay, thank you. If not, we, oh, excuse me, thank you. Uh, and maybe I'm bringing this up too quick, but mm -hmm. is the is the storage units going to be interior rather than exterior, or is it interior only? Yep, those would be proposed to be interior storage units. Um, they would be retrofitting the inside of the building to have those individual storage units. Okay, okay good. good. Since the applicant is here, if you'd like, we'd like you to please come up to the podium, introduce yourself, please tell us who you are, and anything you'd like to tell us that the commissioners can know about the property. If one of you'd like to speak, please. This is your entitlement. Thank you. My name is Jake Ross, and this is Josh McGaha. We're both with RNM. We purchased the property here. Okay. Uh, just closed on it, uh, I think, uh, June, yeah, about a month ago. So, uh, as, sh as Julie mentioned, CNH Supply is still currently the tenants in this property now. Um, they will be vacating here at the end of August. Um, and so, uh, with that said, um, you know, I guess we kind of took a gamble here, picking up the property, hoping we could do something with it. Um, but uh, anyways, as she mentioned, yes, our intention is to do the mini storage inside the uh, big uh, warehouse portion, which is, I think, roughly about 10,000 square feet. Um, the idea there is I think it would be suited well for the, uh, all the um, uh, tenants that uh, live within the stove loft apartments and so forth. Um, and not to mention just uh, uh, it seems like a, a good use of the, of the space and then having the... Um, um, the history of the building still kind of untouched uh, because of the high ceilings in there. So uh, I think we would like to be able to, uh, uh, these retrofits are only about 10 feet tall. And so um, I think pretty much most of the building will stay, remain very historic. And I know you guys aren't doing that, but just so you know, there's not a lot of demo or anything to the property. In fact, if anything, it's gonna be more uh, uh, cosmetically updated and so forth, so. Thank you. Hey, Do you, you have Anything you'd like to add to that? Well, just that our intentions are on the small. There used to be two addresses there, and I believe the address is still on the 406. I, I, I believe it was addressed initially, and I did speak with the, uh, so the gentleman that owns CNH Supply, who is the individual we also purchased it from, um, I, I just speaking to him after we've closed on it, which it didn't come up with the title company or anything while we were doing the uh, title search. Um, I, I don't know if it's still addressed, uh, as 410, which was the, um, from talking to, the, again, the gentleman that owned the building, okay. which was the kind of the shop front or the storefront that um, Julie mentioned earlier. And then the larger warehouse portion, he mentioned to me later on, again, after closing, that that was addressed as 412. 
So I don't know. Uh, again, it didn't show up on any of our uh, title searches when I did that with the city and stuff. So I'm, you know, I'm hoping this is, you know, correct uh, as far as that uh, goes. But with that secondary the smaller building to the north, the little yeah. cut out, mm -hmm. um, that's where our attentions are putting a cigar lounge and a walk-in humidor. We do yeah. both yeah. own uh, Broadway Liquor, so we I actually hold the wholesale tobacco license is only mm -hmm. for cigars. So we can sell directly to that property from the mm -hmm. liquor store. Um, that would be the intent, because um, there's no room in the liquor store <laughs> to do that, unless you want seven foot ceilings. Um, so the lounge would be up top, and then the humidor would be on the bottom first floor. And our intent is the, supposedly the old um, melting pot is in there. Mm -hmm. From when they used to make the tank tour. So mm -hmm. We want to keep that and do like a Lexan glass on top. So now the problem is you got to be 21 to enter. So if um, the, the smoking uh, lounge, the cigar lounge, uh, if you all are familiar with these, it's kind of a, um, a new trendy thing. They've got a couple locations. There's, um, and I believe it's Outlaw is the name of the business. There's one down in Olathe. I think there's one in Zona Rosa. So just from what we've heard, people coming through the um, liquor store in which we've added a, um, a humidor in and just getting feedback that it's something that would be um, nice to have close by so people don't have to travel as far, which again is a, is a plus for the city to uh, bring in that business or keep that business here instead of it leaving the town um, and traveling <coughs> outside to enjoy the same thing. So it's, it's a kind of a classier, nicer um, lounge. Um, so it's not intended to be. Uh, it's not a fold up table and chairs. Yeah. I, so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I got one question. Um, actually, two. Uh, number one, <coughs> have you thought, I know you're just now starting this, but has there been a part of your thought process of possibly expanding that cigar part to have served like alcohol, like. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of those lounges, like up in Omaha and stuff like that, they'll have like brandy sniffers, and people come in, they'll they'll smoke the cigars, have, you know, alcohol or something like that. I mean, is that something that you had? There, well, there's, we can't serve alcohol. Yeah, that, we, yeah, we, right, we exactly. Only, we That's... can only obtain our licenses for the store, okay. and he's actually breaking off. We're in the process of buying a secondary liquor store, not in the city, um, so he will be breaking off from liquor. So our liquor license. Okay. Okay. This is one and done. So. Um, okay. Good. Uh, the only other, I guess, <clears throat> really the only other concern that I may have um, is is traffic, um, traffic for the storage units, uh, in and out. How you're gonna control that? And, and sure. You know your thought, just your thoughts on yep. on that process. So uh, the overview here, and I'm gonna step closer to yeah. so we have an issue here. Uh, right about here is a big see probably about 30, 35 foot gate. And so the intention here would be, um, you can kind of see a driveway where this vehicle is parked. There's a big 25 foot door here. So the idea would be, um, you know, if individuals were coming to lease a, a unit, they could either park up here outside on the, uh, you know, the off-street parking and, uh, or excuse me, on-street parking and come in through the um, door up here, uh, speak with somebody there, lease, lease a unit or look through them. But then the intention there would be the way I, we lay out the, um, the retrofit mm -hmm. would be they would uh, park back, so they would enter through here. Um, this gate would be uh, part of our intention again, um, uh, would be to redo this whole front fencing and get a nice automatic gate, whereas right now it's just two swinging gotcha. uh, gates. And then they would come, uh, uh, people would come in and park here. And then there's also, uh, so there's the garage door, and then there's also a large um, steel door that they could also come through. And then, so the idea would be they would enter here, do their, uh, you know, loading and Best loading right. of storage versus you're right having to come in off the street and, and busy up the traffic here. So okay. uh, the idea would be everybody would filter in. And again, uh, just kind of from what I've ever seen with, with this, I'm sure maybe you guys have better information. Um, it doesn't seem like it's a big weekend deal where everybody shows up and is unloading stuff. It's just kind of a come and go um, type of uh, operation. So. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, um, this is new to us as well. I don't know how much traffic we would have, but I think just um, intention-wise, there's plenty of parking within that uh, 
a little over an acre lot that we could keep everybody off the street so that okay. traffic could flow nicely still. Okay, it sounds like a, a decent plan. I have a question. So, great segue into the parking lot. What are you going to do with the parking lot? Are so, you going to rent those out? Yep, so um, I did speak to Hal a little bit, and we've just been communicating via email. Uh, some of these retrofit uh, places I spoke to asked about exterior storage as well, and I believe that was a concern this gentleman had. And so um, I don't know if that would be a phase two possibility, if that still falls within the central business district zoning. If not, then our intention, kind of as you can see, that CNH has done over the years, and again, this is an older area from when uh, this business has been in there for 30 plus years, I believe. So he's had RVs and exterior storage. So our intent right now, just you know, for supplemental um, income, would be to also you know utilize this as well as what it's already being used for. So RVs, boat, exterior storage like that. And if uh, if if it permits, then um, maybe in the future, as part of the phase two, and then financially. You know, maybe do some um, exterior storage units, but again, that would be pending. Um, you know how this zoning would help or not help allowing us to do that. So, I have a second question. Yes, ma'am. Really kind of trivial, but what are your hours going to be for the cigar bar? Have you thought about that? Um, that's a million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've we've kind of I don't know with Broadway. I can tell you the hours that work. And, you know, Leavenworth is one of those towns that shuts down early. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want phone calls at 2 in the morning, 1 in the morning, 12 in the morning. So we thought about keeping it from, like, noon to 10, one of those hours, um, cross-staffed with the storage facility and the employee. Um, I don't know, I really got to see the need, the drive on the need. No one, it's kind of like the liquor business. No, they, the state of Kansas allowed 9 o'clock on Sundays. At Broadway, we still open at noon. No one's showing up at nine to noon on a Sunday in the middle of the neighborhood. So I'm going to use. We're going to set it up accordingly to the neighborhood. And but if like this is a Chiefs game, we'll stay open a little later. You know, if we stay for the games. Um, other than that, it's not because I know if someone doesn't work it, I have to work it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're. It'll be. Usually, I think they close about ten to eleven. How long? Yeah. Um, they don't stay open too late. It's or, not, or private parties, like if somebody wants to sure, parties. Sure, that could be something, yeah. Right. And again, I think that just like he said, the demand would drive what what we would ultimately end up doing. So. Sure. Thank with, you. Yes, sir. With your, uh, is there going to be 24 7 access to the storage facilities? So that would be the plan there is um, uh, to uh, have a system which most of these storage uh, facilities now allow you to have a pin and that's logged in or that's I, um, that's linked to your account and if your account's paid up then I think that allows you 24 access 24 hour access so yes that I mean that would again kind of be the intention I haven't gone that far yet to see what as far as what kind of software systems they have in place that that link those together with the people coming and going so as of right now until all this other stuff could happen which you know would be the fencing the gate system and all that then right now we would just run off of a uh, kind of what he's done right now for hours of operation you know weekends um you know certain hours and then throughout the week is certain hours and then after he locks the gate and goes home then they don't have access to their stuff but they knowingly uh are aware of that when they uh, park their stuff there or have their stuff inside at for the time being are you have certain size restrictions on your outside RVs and boats and stuff like that? Um, Are you going to have set up parking stalls? So that would be, stalls? I have looked at uh, pricing for uh, asphalt. So it, it's kind of a hodgepodge right now of concrete, asphalt, more concrete, <coughs> some yeah. flow over concrete, gravel. <coughs> so um, the intention would be to leave the concrete, concrete that's there, um, and then asphalt the rest. And then the asphalt company has said that they could uh, do designated stalls accordingly um, and then uh, now again that would be if we just plan on keeping it outdoor parking storage but if if we wanted to do um, outdoor storage units that has to be built on concrete pads again that that would be what I would call a phase two and again all um, uh, you know the need is is the need there for us to even build those and put the money into it so um, for the time being i think we would again just keep what we've got but yes have some kind of nice designated area to where again it's it's you know he's done a good job but you know 
keep it nice looking and and um, so. So I have a what? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know. You checked into the requirements that the state or county or city requires as far as having smoke inside of the building. The ventilation systems is it connected to the AC system where it's recirculating. Is it going to escape yeah. into people's storage areas or next door? Well, so that it would be, um, again, if, if uh, this building is separated by, you know, it's all, I would call type one construction, what I'd call all concrete, and, and I don't even think it's center block. I think it's just all poured. So all poured. Um, anyways, it is, uh, as far as uh, that goes, um, we have spoke to the HVAC company as far as um, um, what, <clears throat> yeah, the, but as far as the HVAC, but then they could also install the, um, yeah, the smoke eaters, which allow that to, to draw that out to where, again, you know, it's an enjoy, enjoyable environment where you're not trying to walk through a hazy cloud of, of stuff. So, and, and again, the ceilings just on this other side are probably 12 feet tall, um, at least right now. So there, it's very, um, very open as far as that goes. So those smoke eaters would be, uh, you know, up there to capture all that and exhaust it. I think it's a great idea. I, I've heard several people have requested uh, Cigar lounge mm -hmm. in this town. So I was going to say that it's going to be classy, a classy. And it wouldn't be a big footprint. Classy. It's something, and then you know, maybe as as again mm -hmm. as as we expand, you know, that would be something else we could meet with you all again in the future and find something else that's suitable. But right now, it's kind of a small footprint for us to again for the city too to kind of see if this is something that works and if people like it. And, um, Gen gentlemen, so, I commend you for yeah. seeing a potential need mm -hmm. both parts mm -hmm. here with some storage across from a large apartment complex and. Your cigar. I, I commend you for rolling up your sleeves and taking a chance on this. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's definitely a gamble right now. Again, closing you can on tell. something before <laughs> before yeah. we even had any OKs. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, what's your ETA and what's your signage going to look like? Okay. So the uh, as far as an ETA goes, the first question. Um, again, I'm sure you all are very familiar with how COVID has either slowed or increased expenses. So right now, just uh, from some of the retrofit companies, they're like six months out. And again, I haven't put any deposits down because that would be a very bad move on me because they're one, you know, a significant down to even start an order. So I, this is all, again, tentative on, on how you all vote and so forth. But um, uh, I would say we're at least, um, I mean, six months at least from an okay from you all before I can even reach back out to them and say, okay, I've got the okay, rezoning's happening. Let's go ahead and start getting our retrofit built out so and then they can come and install it. So I would say at least six months from an okay from you all. Um, and then, you know, however long after that sure. to do everything else. But again, there would be a lot of exterior um, cosmetic things we would like to do just to kind of get that flow of that hole. If you guys have driven down there, which I'm sure you have, to kind of get it all to, to look very similar and, and bring back that historical look from what he has it now. So or it has been since, but, uh, and then I forgot the next question. The signage outside. Signage. Um, the, the signage, um, so we also, just our background, we aren't in investments. We have around 43 properties in town here. Um, and we also own first city properties. So it'll fall within our first city family. Um, so it'll be first city storage. And we plan on doing it, I don't know how, it'll stay within our monitor that we have. Um, it pretty much started from the girls in the real estate side. So that it would be it would be under for city storage. So okay. As far as the name, but signage, I think. Um, like how will it look? Yeah, like, I I think it would uh, be. I wish I had my shirt on. My shirt yeah. On. Uh, the first city. Yeah, the first is it city glow logo. With, like the area, or is it going to be a flashy neon light? No, no I don't, we no, wouldn't no do anything neon, neon lights. I, in fact, just looking at the building, um, it's kind of a two roof system here. You've got a, a the flat roof up on top, and then you've got some. Um, um, it's got like a long wall. A long wall that, that has some, you know. I'm well, well aware of the Okay, so I, we were thinking if, if finishing that off mm -hmm. and then doing just a signage there. Um, so, again, no neon lights or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then out on the front, maybe a nice awning with, okay. again, just a very simple signage. Uh, probably actually no neon, I would think, at all. Um, but uh, maybe but maybe just maybe that. just back. <laughs> now, the cigar, there would probably be some nice, you know, nice signage. There was some backlighting. You know, just to kind of give it that uh, neat rustic -y look, yeah. Because again, with the cigar lounge, I mean, it's brick from ceiling walls to ground. So, again, keep it very industrial looking. Um, it kind of seems like that's the thing. Yeah, and, I like that. And so, uh, you know, again, kind of keep a lot of that 
that look the same. Uh, so the signage would try to meet that too. So we don't want anything too flashy. Kind of and again, you don't want to distract. Yeah, you don't want to distract from any tenants that would, you know, have a, a window looking out there and not being able to sleep because we've got some blinking, you know, right. stop here sign. So is that building sprinkler? Uh, is it? It is. Okay. It is. Wet or dry? It's a wet system, but I don't think it's active. It does what? I don't think the system works. It, it might be. It, I mean, it's uh, yeah, I don't, uh, the I don't big, find out. the big, uh, standpipe coming in <laughs> yeah. is, is still in place. So, I mean, it was a plumbing place. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, just have him start hooking it all up before he leaves. And so that would be, that would be <laughs> Building. Sure, and that would that would come back to the city inspections, um, and I have already yeah. submitted to uh, uh, how <coughs> the uh, 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 the scale two scale drawings. I'm, and that's something again, pending how this all goes. I'll end up working with the city from here on out, and then uh, getting them in there to meet their requirements as far as what they say we can and uh, and, and don't need. I guess so. Does any other commissioner? Have any other <laughs> questions that you have at this time? If not, I only heard a few buzzwords, but Julie ad addressed the issue earlier, and that is Leavenworth preservation. Yes, sir. It triggered me on historical issues. It, you've made some magic words like retrofit. I won't even go into the word like adaptive restoration, but the planning commission makes the recommendation, as you know, to the city commissioners. Okay. And I'm certain the city commissioners will, depending on our actions, have some questions related to that issue that Julie addressed of Leavenworth preservation and just the general area in, in, in general, but I'm sure yes, you, you, you're aware of that, correct? Yeah, and that, and again, that uh, meeting is on Wednesday, so I have There you go. I just, I just on, want to make you aware that. Yes, yeah, I plan on attending that one, too. It will yeah. be, have to be looked at and yes, sir. to be in harmony with yep. what we're looking at. And him and I love old stuff. I mean, okay. it's so cool. You know, some of our, one of our oldest properties is out on North Esplanade, and it's 1850-something. Okay. Well, then you understand what And so we love, is. yeah, we like the old history of Leavenworth, and that's Got kind it. of what drew us to that okay. building is just how oh, good. cool it was. Preservation, historical, there's yep. some issues there that you did address. Absolutely, right? sure. Thank you. Yep, that's so Wednesday. I'm also on that commission. Okay. But I won't be there Wednesday night, but I'll oh. be there for you. Okay. <laughs> do you have any questions now? No. Okay, you probably can't do the that. signage. I, I just wanted it to be cohesive. Gotcha. Because I okay. live in a historical home. It's very close to this Absolutely. area. Absolutely, okay. So I just wanted to make sure it all flows. Yep. Does any other commissioner have any other questions for I Okay, that's, thank you. I appreciate you your guys' time. Thank, thank you for your information. You. If you yeah. have a yeah, seat there, you. thank you. I'm closing that portion of it. Yes, sir, thank and you. going to, internally, to the commissioners present here, after review of the total discussion we looked at, we know we have three options. One, we can approve the recommendation for this rezoning request that they're asking for blight to the... Uh, to the Central Business District. We can disapprove the request, but we can certainly table it and request additional time for additional information that we may need. So with that, I will wait for a motion from a board member on that uh, point. I'll just ask when you do your vote, if you could do a roll call vote, just mm -hmm. it's easier for our okay. uh, minutes purposes. Hi. Hi. What? I'm, what? I'm new to your group, okay? Uh, but my question is, I have a concern I think what they've got is a great idea. I have no problem with that. But my concern is about do we have to have some sort of, for them before they can put RVs, et cetera, in there, do we need a, an additional plan? I mean, it's, this is, um, they're planning the whole building, so they should plan their parking and we're just and talking I, about a I rezone. Don't, don't we're yeah, we, we're we, simply we, talking about a rezone. We, we, yeah. we, this at this moment, the planning commission is strictly dealing with the issue of okay. the request yeah, for rezoning from light question. industrial to on that one because that's that's a detailed matter that has to be addressed, and the commissioners can certainly re address that issue, but not us at this time. Thank you. Yeah. So with the rezoning request, we're just looking at the overall zoning, not right. the specific use that they're putting in um, because rezoning it says central business district would allow for any use that's allowed in central business district and then so yeah the details like they indicated of that specific use we'll deal with through staff and if it needs to come back um, based on what they're wanting to do then we'll come back at that point okay okay, okay thank you so i'm um, open up to a motion by a member for uh, from the recommendation that we have on the board from a Applicant requesting the rezoning of the property located 410 South 2nd from I-1 Light Industrial to Central Business District. I move that we change it from a Light Industrial. 
as industrial to a central business district. Okay. Second. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. If each board member then, per Julie, would just please your name and vote yes or no. Start name. John Olin, yes. James Diggs, yay. Sherry Hanson Whitson, yes. Joseph Brooks, yes. Chris Murphy, yes. Claude Widar, yes. Okay, that uh, uh, we congratulations. Uh, this goes to the planning. Uh, this goes to the commissioners, but uh, planning commission has approved that. So thank you for coming tonight, and that closes our business for tonight. That's the only business we had. So thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.